know that if we have gotten through Surah Al-Baqarah, understanding what Allah has said in it, trying to apply what we understand of it, we have achieved a great goal. A great goal. So great that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said that the one who had learned Surah Al-Baqarah among us, among the Sahaba, 60-odd thousand, 80-odd thousand when the Prophet ﷺ died, he was called Hafiz. He was called Hafiz. Today, if you call somebody who learns Surah Al-Baqarah Hafiz, people say, Ah, A'udhu Billah. That's sacrilege. The Hafiz is the one who has memorized the whole Quran from Fatiha to Nas. That is Hafiz. Don't call anybody else Hafiz. That is the attitude people would have today. But that wasn't the understanding of the Sahaba. The one who had learned Surah Al-Baqarah was called Hafiz. Because Hifz didn't mean simply memorizing. Hifz didn't mean memorizing. The Prophet ﷺ said what? خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ the best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it to others. We turn that into another statement. The best of you are those who memorize the Quran and make other people memorize it. These are two different things. Learning the Qur'an may involve memorizing also. But memorizing the Qur'an doesn't necessarily involve learning it. The message of the Prophet ﷺ was to learn the Qur'an. Memorizing was a way to help you to learn it. Not a ritual of just memorizing the text. Where, for example, in Pakistan, the common practice, and this is nothing against Pakistanis. One of my wives was Pakistani. Children who are half Pakistanis. So, don't take this out of context. People say, ah, look, he talked about Pakistanis. Why? Because this is something I've experienced in Pakistani culture. That parents will choose out of their children one male and they will say listen your job is to memorize quran the rest of us will go and we'll deal with the dunya we do whatever you know it takes etc don't worry about anything we will take care of you you just memorize quran just you why because they believe that if one memorizes quran he can take so many family members along with him into jannah so we ensure that we are going to Jannah, we have that one given the job of just memorizing the Quran. A couple of months ago, one Pakistani family contacted me from Canada and they asked me, what should we do? Our son, who memorized the Quran dutifully, practiced Islam, fasted, prayed, everything. 15 years old, he came home and told us, I don't believe in God. Well, I don't believe in God. This was just, you know, so shocking. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Islam. I'm not a Muslim. He memorized the Quran. How can he say that? They said, should we kick him out the house? Because he would, you know, affect the other children. Infect them. 
pass his disease on to them. What should we do? Should we keep him in the house or kick him out? Because big trial, a huge trial. What do you do? But the lesson, the lesson in it, he memorized the Quran and he left Islam. Now, there may be many factors involved. And, you know, that's a whole lecture and discussion in and of itself. A khutbah all by itself. But enough to know that the memorizing of Quran did not protect him. It didn't protect him. Because he didn't know what the Quran was actually saying. That's the reality. So, we need to get back to the Quran as it was intended to be read. To read the Quran with understanding. As Abdullah ibn Mas'ud had said, we used to learn the Quran 10 verses at a time. And we did not move on to the next 10 until we learned and understood everything which was in those 10. We tried to practice it, then we went on. That's how they learned the Quran. Please like, share and subscribe to the Digital Member YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. Please also like, share and subscribe to our Facebook and Twitter. Links in the description of this video.